Bam. Hey guys, I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, coming to you on LinkedIn Live. And as you can see, we're doing things a little bit different today. Number one, yes, we're running a little bit late. Uh, we are actually, man, we finally, we're going super HD. Uh, if, if we fall apart quick and, and things shut down, it, it is what it is. Uh, we have got, man, we're going with the Canon M50 today instead of our, our webcam. And don't get me wrong, we've got a really good webcam, but this is something that, that we've been wanting to do. Uh, got Brandon the Plumber in here. Good to see you. The Urban Explorer is already here, man. I'm out on a night. Um, ugh. You're out on a night out, so can't come in tonight. Good thing, man. I appreciate it. Uh, man, Neil, Merry Christmas to you and yours, too. Uh, William Rosebrock is here. Yes, we are a little late. Uh, Zach, how are you? Good to see you here. Hey, well, can you give me a little bit more cord right here on the keyboard? I can't tell if that's twisted up there or not. Uh, you know, this, this is something different. This is something we've been working on to try to do for the, the beginning of the year. And, and it's kind of neat. Uh, we have, we, we've been using, uh, a, a, a very good Logitech 4K camera, and we have no problem at all with it. But we've known that we wanted to upgrade. And our friends over at Live Streaming Pros did a video about how to set up the Canon M50. And, and we watched it, and we said, you know what? We want to try that. So that's the first one that's on our list that we're doing. And we're actually getting ready to invest in another camera and, and do things a little bit different. But man, this is a really good setup. Uh, I've got a keyboard. I've got a mouse. Uh, I can talk, man, talk with you, move around. I really like this. Uh, Jim Brandt, how are you? Good to see you in here. Burnt Clutch is back. Fantastic. Mike Hadfield, sorry I haven't been on lately. Uh, work has been taking me away from my phone for a few months. Man, I get it. Uh, I tell you what, it's crazy here right now. Uh Paul Peck, brother, I called you earlier. Uh, I was out in East Texas yesterday. If y'all hadn't seen Paul Peck's lives on Sundays, uh, one o'clock central time, you, you need to get in. He, he's doing some great things and, and it's, he's, he's really doing them well. And man, we're just, we're, we're having a lot of fun, but I was out in East Texas. I had horrible cell service. I have, um, man, it's just, it's not even Tyler. It's out in Bullard, Texas. And anyway, it, it was a lot of fun. But so my question is, it, man, is everybody ready for Christmas? Uh, and guys, I'm going to tell you all again, if, if this thing dies down, uh, we, we, we've got the Canon M50 today. So we're trying something different. I, I hope that I look good. Uh, I, I know that, man, the picture looks a little bit clearer. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to this. We've been having fun. Uh, Paul, anyway, great to have you here. I don't know if you see earlier, uh, Neil logged in, says, hey, man, lucky, I'm, I'm out on the town. Uh, that's a good thing. So are all y'all ready for Christmas? It is, man, and it blew my mind. I don't know why. I was literally thinking Christmas Eve was Wednesday and Christmas was Thursday because me and Julie were planning on coming in for a little while on Friday and then taking off. But... I got in today and I was flipping through the schedule and looked at tomorrow and it said Christmas Eve. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. And then the guys were like, hey, are we off tomorrow? It's like, well, why would we be off? It's like, okay, wait, tomorrow is Christmas Eve. So very interesting. Uh, Paul, thank you. Uh, this is a new camera. Guys, let, let me know what you think. Uh, and I say it's new. This is the camera that we shoot our videos on. And, and like I said, thanks to live streaming pros, uh, David and Luria. Uh, David actually did a video on how to set up your Canon M50 and man, it, it's, we set it up. We, we bought the lens that he had. Uh, we, we, we've had fun with this. We're, we're learning, we're growing and, and man, we keep trying to do things right, but we're trying to constantly improve. So, you know, man, let, let me know what, what do y'all think about the video? Is it as good as normal? Is it better than normal? I'll go back and analyze it later. Uh, but Paul, I appreciate that. Also, want to shout out today to a uh, man Wrangler. I went to some new shirts, and number one, I really, really like this color. Uh, but I've been buying a, a cheaper shirt. 
Uh, nothing wrong with it, but I, I've been buying a cheaper shirt and Julie says I'm looking good. I like that. I love that. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Julie, what do, you, what do you think about this color? So I've been buying a cheaper shirt and I've been carrying them down and having them embroidered. Uh, thanks to Logotology. Uh, now I'll tell you what, we will just get ready for Christmas. Now we can we can have fun today. As, as y'all can see, Logotology took care of me. Uh, and if I, if I get little red fuzzies on me, man, it is what it is. Uh, thanks to Wrangler. Thanks to Logotology. Because the shirts that I've had, I've, I've always carried down to Logotology. I've had them embroidered. And then I've carried them over to my tailor. And I always had to have them cut on the side and the arms because that they're just they're bigger than they should be. And it's so funny because when I carried these into Logotology, Wrangler said, or uh, she says, oh, my God, these shirts are amazing. And and they are. Uh, anyway, that they fit better. They feel better. That they they look better. Uh, I, I love the work that Logotology does. And, and, yes, I got the George Strait logo because I bought George Strait shirts or, you know, it's the way it works out. Uh, but, man, I like this. I still had to carry them down and have my collar done. Y'all know that I, I I like the banded collar, so I'm a little bit different. I've still got my 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 artwork on the back, but man, we're, we're just loving this. This has been pretty cool. Uh, having fun, looking forward to it. Let me see. Sorry about that. Let me see. Santa Claus has glasses. Uh, fantastic. So here we go. Uh, Mike Hadfield, you're a good brother. Paul Peck, great to see you. Julie, thank you. Mike. Actually, be back in state in a few months, so it'll be easier to watch the live videos. I get it. I completely get it. Uh, Mike, where are you at? Are, are you out of town traveling, working, or, or what are you doing? Uh, Paul, thank you so much. I appreciate it. No, we're, we're, I like this camera. This, this is actually a pretty cool look. Uh, Julie's in the house. That's wonderful. Merry Christmas to Paul. Absolutely love it. I'm not old. You're innocent. Oh, you're not old. You're innocent. I love that. Do unions offer residential services? Uh, you're not old. You're ancient, which I guess that fits me fairly well. Uh, I'm a residential service provider and I'm, I'm union. We are, we're part of the United Association at a local 100 here in Dallas. So yeah. Uh, they do. And I'm probably gonna have to go over here and shut the door. I know I'm, I got guys fixing to sneak in the back door. Will, if you're still here, will you come shut my door? Cause I know I got guys coming in the back. Uh, yeah. Julie loves me in ring or I like that. Uh, Paul, let me see. Julie, William. Absolutely. And I gotta figure out how to do glasses or get this monitor closer. Uh, NWG in the hood. Ma'am. What you flexing in the background, man, I got all kinds of cool stuff in the background. Uh, fake Adidas, man, are you joking? Come on. Man, these here some Gary V's, brother. They, isn't, isn't no fake nothing. And, and the cool thing about them, they're also signed by Gary V. And I, I don't do much fake stuff. Just so you know. Uh, so, no, 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 no. Uh, that's it, man. Those are Gary V's. Come on. NWG in the hood. Sorry, man. I'm, I'm not faking much. Townsend Moore, glad to have you back in here. Those of y'all that have been here before, let me know. What, what do you think about the camera? What do you think about the look? Uh, we, we, we've we changed things up a little bit. Uh, we've got a new Canon or, or a new camera. We've got a new lens. And, and guys, if it dies down, we're going to shut it down. I'm not going to try to hook everything back up with the other one. Uh, I know Will's here keeping an eye on things to, to see what we can do. Uh, this is our first time shooting with this, but it's something that we wanted to try. We're trying to improve things for next year. Uh, we still want to talk about plumbing and, you know, we don't want to get the cannon down in the sewer, but for here in the studio work, this is what we're doing. But I am talking to people about doing some stuff with some different cameras. We're, we're working on some really cool things. And I tell you what, it's so excited because we had to shoot a video a while ago for LinkedIn. Uh, we actually, it, and it's really neat because we hit a million views just the other day. We should hit 20,000 subscribers in two days. 
So, man, that's going to be an amazing amazing Christmas present. And, man, it's just neat because we're, we're having fun at what we do. We get to help people. And I've gone through and read so many comments here lately. I, I, I've been trying to find time to sit down and reply to them. And that's probably what I'm going to end up doing tomorrow, uh, maybe Christmas morning. But we are really looking at what can we do to, to do things better. And I'm reading all these comments, and people are so happy about the fact that, that we're teaching plumbing. We're helping them with plumbing, helping them learn to grow their businesses. And, and that's what we want to do. And as you see right there, 19.7 thousand. So we are actually under 300 subs that we need. That's great. Uh, man, look at Paul Peck with his emojis. The Christmas tree, the Santa. Brother, you got it going on. All right, burnt clutch, our drive to Canyon Lake. Fantastic. Hey, talking poop, you got to love it. Uh, E-Digit.com, what make and model of cameras are you using? Uh, this is the Canon M50. And, man, I, I tell you what, uh, we've had fun with this. And, and, guys, it's not an expensive camera. It was a great one for us to start out. But I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of digging the, the picture. Uh, Will's got it set up where I've got a monitor right here in front of me, with his, which is great uh, because I can help see the comments. Uh, the bad thing about it is, man, there's only two thumbs up, and I can see that too. So, so you know, may, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but, but I'm having fun. The Urban Explorer can't hear a thing, and you're drunk. Welcome to the club, brother. How are you? Uh, Merry Christmas to you, Neil. It's good to have you here, brother. Uh, back up a little bit. So the, there you go. Got the camera. Uh, Mike was in Georgia. Oh, the, in, con, in the country, Georgia, for a month, but back in Germany for three months, then getting stationed in New York. Man, good for you. So Mike Hadfield, what kind of station? What, what branch of the military are you in? I've got a nephew in the Air Force, and... And he, he, he moves around a lot. So, man, I, I feel for you. But, man, congratulations. You're getting to see some great parts of the world. And, and thank you. So, never heard about that. So, Gary V uh, teamed up with uh, K-Swiss. And they've done a couple of different kinds of shoes now. These are the ones that I got at Vid Summit last year. And actually got to meet Gary V and get them signed. So, man, appreciate it. No, and I didn't take his any disrespect. None at all. Uh, no, you're, you're good brother. And, 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 and that's the thing, these case Swisses, and I don't remember what he called them, uh, dirt and sky or something like that. Uh, man, they, these are pretty cool though. As you see K Swiss and I want to try something just since we're here playing around, I'll move it up. I was wanting to see if it would auto focus. I don't know if we've got the auto focus on, uh, will, maybe you can tell me if we do or not. Uh, but man. We're, we're having fun. Uh, so let me see back where we are. E-Digit.com, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Zach Brown, I like plumbing, but most union workers here in Kentucky are lazy and rude. Is it like that in Texas? You know what? And, man, it's funny. I, I, I'm sure that union is a state of mind, and the guys that came up through the training program you know, that they're, they're convinced that they're taught a better way. And guys, I, I can't say that they're not, they actually go through a formal training and that's got to help. Uh, does that give you a, a reason to be sassy and rude? No, to me, it doesn't. Uh, I came up open shop and I was trained by some of the best plumbers I've ever met. But when I got into the union, I met some really good plumbers there too. So I know that there are really good plumbers on both sides. And it's really funny because when I was a union plumber and, you know, people would always talk about, well, you came in from open shop. It's like, yeah, but you know what, man, I'm, I do just as good a work as you do, maybe even better uh, because I knew that I had to try harder and I had to fight harder at it and, man, it worked. But the, the really neat thing about it is, man, there's good people on both sides and, and it's really funny because when here in Texas, we started fighting over the plumbing license and, and what needed to be done, you know, whenever I spoke at the Capitol, the thing I stood up and said is, look, this is not residential or commercial. It's not union. I mean, it's not uh, service or new construction. It's not union or non-union. Guys, this is a plumbing license. And that's what we're all here fighting for. And, and it's true. And man, here in Texas, we're, we're all uniting pretty well. 
because there's a lot going on and a lot of things that we need to do. And we're all going to need to be on the same team. Uh, <laughs> I heard that while I'm in the toilet, I have the M fifties. It's a lovely camera. Yeah. You know, Neil, you're right. It is a lovely camera, a lovely camera. Paul Peck, 75,000 subscribers. Guys, I'll tell you what, and, and I tell you all this often. If, if you're not subscribed to Paul Peck's channel, you need to be. Uh, what he's doing on, on YouTube, uh, and, and guys, he's everywhere. But YouTube, 75,000 subscribers. That is fantastic. You know, consider we're in the trades. This is not something that everybody... You know, I've, I've got friends that run YouTube channels and, and don't get me wrong. Oh my God, I learned so much from them, but everybody who gets on YouTube wants to learn how to do YouTube. Everybody who gets on YouTube doesn't want to learn how to do plumbing or drywall or anything like that. So it, it, it's a, it, it's a fun situation that we're in and man, we're working to help get information out there and, and help it grow. Paul, that, that is fantastic. Uh, the Pexter, you gotta love it. Uh, Paul Peck, hey there, good buddy. Absolutely. Okay, so Will, it's on manual focus. I want to try to do auto next time, uh, just because I mean, I remember seeing something that uh, uh, David did where, where Laura he, he pulled his hand forward and it's like it focused in on it, and you could see everything behind him getting more blurry. Really cool. Uh, but guys, man, we're learning and having fun, and like I say, if this thing shuts down. Uh, and we're out of here, dudes, we're out of here. Uh, I'm not going to fight it and try and get it all back up. We're having fun and we're learning, but man, I got, I got to tell you, I'm kind of digging the picture. Uh, so let's see. Mike, in the infantry, in the army, man, thank you for your service. I, brother, I do appreciate it. Uh, man, what y'all do is, is phenomenal. And thank you so much. Townsend, working on a tankless heaters this week for the first time and having a blast. That's fantastic. Uh, Townsend, where are you at? Uh, what company are you with? What kind of work are y'all doing? Uh, there's tankless in residential, commercial, all, all the way around. Uh, burnt clutch. What was my worst customer experience? Man, I, that, that's an easy one for me. Uh, you know, I've had some people do some pretty sorry things. Uh, I did a job one time for a customer on a gas line and Atmos had come out and moved her gas meter, uh, changing things up, putting in new meters, relocating it closer to the house, whatnot. And when they went to turn it back on, they told her she had a leak under her house. So I get a call. I tell her what it is to get somebody out there. She's fine with it. Uh, we get out there and determine, look, you got several leaks. We really need to repop this. Gave her a price. She said, look, I'm fine with it. Uh, man, I just, I need this gas turned back on. Let's get it done. So we did. Uh, and so the second day when, when we're there, I'm down trying to pull a permit to get it inspected. And I find out it's in a historical district. So I call her or text her. I thank God I texted her. Texted her, hey, is your house in a historic district? And she says, yeah. I said, well, here's the deal. Uh, the city is saying it's going to take seven days to get a permit. And she's like, look, I cannot wait seven days. So I left the city, went down to City Hall, talked to the Historic Society, went back to the city, went back to City Hall, went back to the city, got the permit, got it inspected. And when I sent her her invoice that night, I, I filled her in the whole way. And she said, look, please do whatever you have to do. So I don't remember how much extra I charged for pulling a permit. It wasn't anything crazy. Uh, but she just kept telling me, look, do whatever you have to do. I need this gas on, please. So I did. Well, that night, whenever I sent her her invoice, she calls me and she says, I'm going to tell you. I've got your company pulled up on, on a place to give reviews. And if you don't come in and lower my bill, I'm going to give you a bad review. And I said, do me one favor. And she said, what's that? I said, spell my name right. Because, you know, you're not going to bend me over the barrel. I really don't care. Uh, you want to give me 100 bad reviews, do what you got to. Uh, the thing is, I went in, I, I fought it. I, I sent the company all the emails, all the text messages, all everything. And they said, hey, you're right. 
which leads me to a whole nother bad end of it. I said, good. Will you remove that? And they said, no, uh, she posted it. So we can't remove it. I said, really, you can't remove it. And they said, well, if you want to join and become a member for a thousand dollars a year, we'll remove it. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not that interested in it. So thank you very much. Uh, so Brent clutch, that was it. Uh, Townsend, you're doing residential now. Good for you. Uh, that's fantastic. Paul Peck. Absolutely. Mike, thank you so much. Quality work depends on how much pride you take in your work, attitude and pride in your work. And that's it. Uh, you got to take pride in your work. You've got to have a great attitude. You've got to want to do the right thing and you've got to want to do it great. And, you know, when, when I talk to Paul Peck, I, I, I know, look, man, we're on the same page. I see it. Uh, I see it. Uh, Mike, man, you're fantastic. Thanks, brother. Uh, Grayson stepped in the house and said, Merry Christmas. Glad to have you here, man. Uh, spell my name right. I'm sorry, man. Uh, but, but it, but, and, and I tell you what, uh, I might have used a little bit different language when I said that. But, but, but that's my thing is, is, is look, I, I'm not gonna. I'm I'm not going to negotiate with you. I'm not going to haggle with you. I told you what it would be. I told you. And, and to be honest, I didn't charge her enough. Uh, but I did tell her if she didn't pay it, I, I'd, I'd get somebody down the next day and we'd remove everything we installed and then she could handle it, hire somebody else. Uh, and, and and you know what? That That's the problem with being in the trades is, is you know, we're not represented well by by the cities, the municipalities, the police departments. Uh, it, it's pretty bad when they tell you, well, if, if the customer doesn't want to pay, you don't leave. That's the only way we can do anything. And, and, and it's like, man, that, that is a joke. Uh, we should be able to Zach, you're good, brother. Uh, my, I started to have Will bring me a charger in here a while ago. Yeah. My, mine's getting down there too. So I know how it is. Uh, you're good. I appreciate it. And man, thanks for stopping in. Thanks for commenting. Uh, guys, if y'all are in here, and you like what we're doing, man, give us a thumbs up, share it, tell other people about it. Uh, we, we really are trying to do good things here. Uh, I think my biggest, my biggest goal here is to help recruit people into the trades because I see the shortage. I see, man, I, I see how many jobs that we need to fill. I need plumbers. I need plumbers almost every day. And the, the thing is, I really want to recruit good plumbers. I want to bring good plumbers in, but bringing good plumbers in when you can't find them, it, it, it's kind of hard to do. And I don't know, there's just, there's got to be, there's got to be something that changes. You know, we went so long pushing people. Thank you, Will. Uh, we went so long pushing people towards college and, and, and we told them, look, you've got to go to college. You, you've, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. And, and the truth is, man, unless you're going to be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that, do you really need college? Is it something that you can learn? And I'm sure you're going to say, well, you know, business and this and this. And, and look, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just want you to think about it. Uh, a four-year college degree, and, and I've done the research here lately for, for a, a video. A four-year college degree can cost you anywhere from eighty to $200,000. And to be honest, some of you are going to say, look, I can do it cheaper. Some of you are going to say, I can do it more. Great. Let's call it 80 to 200. Uh, so, so let's hit the middle there, which would be what? 140. Uh, so let's say a student has to go into debt $140,000 to get through college. Now, somebody getting into the trades can earn anywhere from 200 to $300,000 during that same amount of time. Let's lower it. Let's just say it's 200. So at the end of five years or four years, you're going to get out of college. You're going to have $140,000 in debt, and you're going to take on an entry-level position making about $40,000, $50,000 a year, where a tradesman here in the Dallas area is going to get out of the Apprentice Training Center in, in five years. He's going to have made, let's just say, Let's say 240. Let's, uh, let's say they're 250. Let's pick right in the middle. Uh, he's going to have made $250,000 over that five year period. And to be honest, I think it's actually closer to three. 
but which position would you rather be in? Because now when he gets out, he's got a if the, God. Somebody starting school now. When they get out, they're gonna be making about eighty grand a year. Uh guys, it, it, the trades are great, and getting into them, I man, you got a great opportunity for a great future. Uh, I just, I, I, I really think more people need to get into it, and, and that's that's what I'm trying to do: help more people get in. You know. Man, it's funny you mentioned those three letters, Paul, B, 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 because that may have been something listed in the website that she was at. And like I said, yeah, scam. Uh, Zach, peace, brother, be good. Uh, how do you keep your guys happy and keep the turnover rates low? I, I'll tell you what, Vlad, that, that's that's the thing I've got a problem with. Uh, keeping guys happy is, is not an easy thing to do because, you know, as a company owner, you you see everything, and, and it's like you know. Look, if you take if you have guys take four hours to do a two hour job, how do you motivate them? How do you keep them happy? If if they do a, a four hour job in an hour, what shortcuts did you take? What did you do wrong? What did you cheat the customer on? Uh, we we try to keep guys happy by by giving them training, by helping them learn, by helping them get better. Uh, and, and you know what? You you, you can't always do that. Uh, You've got to make profit in order to be able to pay for the training, to pay for new equipment, new tools, new techniques, things like that. Now, don't get me wrong. All the vendors have a training that, that they'll help set you up with, and we've done a lot of that. We've also done a lot of additional uh, training. Let me reach over here and grab my tea. Uh, we've also done additional training. Uh, Julie's an etiquette and protocol consultant. She's taught sales training before. So, so we can go through and teach the guys about a lot of different things. But I'll tell you what. Keeping guys motivated is hard. Uh, we, we gave guys a little bonus for Christmas. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's, it's not a ton, but it's probably more than we could afford as the company at the time. But now we want we, we want the guys to understand how much we appreciate them. Our thing is, I'm looking at each one of these guys thinking, what can I do to help them have a better future in this career? And that's what I'm looking at. So that's what I'm trying to do. And man, if you got a way to motivate them and keep the turnover rates low, something I hadn't tried, let me know. Jose Ardiaga, bad glad to have you back. Uh 761 in LA. I want you to know. Uh Jose, I will be in LA. I'm flying in on the first. I fly out on the third. Uh Coming in to coming in to have fun. Uh, Larkin's mechanical from Chicago in here. Good to have you here. I appreciate that. Burnt clutch problem you see with the next generation is that they want money fast, but don't want to put in the time and effort. And, and burnt clutch and, and a lot of it, you're right. And and here's the funny thing I want to tell you about me. When I started plumbing, I made four seventy five an hour. Now at that time I was high school age because I, I started the middle of my junior year. Uh, so my thing is I, I made four seventy five an hour within a year or two. Uh, and don't get me wrong. I, I got back out of plumbing, went back to school, graduated, then got back into plumbing. But my thing is I knew I wasn't making as much money as I wanted. So I got additional jobs. I was a bartender. I was a bouncer. I was a security guard. I did all kinds of different things to, to make more money. I built redwood decks. I built fences. Uh, I've always been a hard worker. So for me to go out and get another job to have a, a supplemental income while I learned plumbing, man, I had no problem with it. And I'll tell you what, I'm glad I did it because I learned a lot. But then when I went to work for companies that wanted somebody to work overtime and work late, man, I was great to do it because then I was making really good money because I was making overtime. So I, I loved it. Uh Big problem I see. There you go, Julie. The law assumes we are all big corporations, and they do. You know, the, the laws are set up where it is. It, it's tough for us to do things, and it, it's fun. Uh, credit cards, free money. There you go. Uh, Larkins, exactly. That they, they come out of college and can't even make the student loan payments. And, and man, you're right. But but it's sad. I saw a deal. Uh, I don't remember if it was uh, Mr. Wonderful or if it was Mike Rowe. But talking about, you know, there's like 
five tri- or, or no, there's over a trillion dollars in student debt right now. And maybe it was just debt in general in the United States, but most of that is student loans. And there's over 5.2 million unfulfilled jobs. Guys, the, the trades are a great place. People that say, like, I can't get a job. No, you're not trying. Or you don't want to change or try something new. You may not be able to find the job that you're looking for. But, I mean, that's why I didn't join the Navy. I told them I, I signed up for Admiral. And, and they said that position didn't open. So I didn't sign up. Uh, not really, but you know what? People that aren't gonna, that don't want to get in and, and do the work and learn and grow, and there's a long way to go. Uh, so I hope more people get into it. Uh, guitar 1301 worked great for me. Glad I became a plumber and tradesman. Absolutely. Uh, guitar 1301, where, where are you located and what kind of plumbing do you do? Residential or commercial service or construction? Uh, we talk about it all. Uh, yeah, Paul, uh, I've never given them, uh, I told them no matter of fact, uh, man, after that, that guy kept bugging me, kept harassing me and he'd call down once a week say, man, look, you really need to sign up. And I kept telling him, look, you, you know, <laughs> the three B's, this is how y'all do business. I will never be part of that because this is a scam. And man, I blew it up. And, and I tell you what's funny. And I, I don't know where I found it, but I found a review of the three B's. And they had like a, a B rating and it might've been a, a C might've been a, a B minus or a C plus. But I finally, the next time the guy called, I told him, look, I've got a better rating than you do. So let me help you, but I'm not paying you a thousand dollars a year, you know, to do this. It just didn't not happen. So that's kind of funny. Paul, thank you, sir. Uh, Guys, if, if you tweet out that, you know, you're watching this live stream, tag underscore Roger Wakefield in it, and I'll, I'll go and comment, like it, share it. I really do appreciate it. Uh, and, and, you know, if you like what you're doing, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, tell people about it. Leave a comment. Let it. Let us know later, you know, what you think about it. We really are trying to do things good. Amy, I love this. Hire a girl, and if they drag their feet, tell them you'll give them a job. You'll give... The job to the girl. There you go. Uh, a, lot, a lot of fire under their bus like you've never seen. Amy, I'll tell you what. Uh, how many of y'all have seen the Kohler commercial for plumbing? And, and it's for a toilet. And I got to tell you, I love it. Uh, it. It's about a female plumber. And she gets out. And, you know, you see her grab the toolbox and head into the house. And, you know, you see the guy across the street looking and, you know, he watches this girl plumber get out and go into the house. And this guy's trying to shove everything in the world down the toilet to stop it up. Well, apparently he's got a really good toilet. It's a Kohler and it won't stop up. And it's funny because I think at the end he drops like a, a bucket of golf balls in it and flushes it. And he looks up and his wife's standing there watching him. So it, it's really, it's a great commercial. Thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, but man, it's funny. i would love to have female plumbers. Uh, the reason being, I think women slow down and think about things more than guys do. Guys walk in, they think they know everything. And, and, you know, nothing wrong with it. But, you know, a lot of times you'll miss things that you probably shouldn't have missed. So my whole thought process is, man, look, if I could find females that, that could come in here and do, and, and I don't mean that could come in here and do it because I know they can do it. If I could find females to come to work for me, uh, man, I love it. I, I love the idea behind it. Uh, and I've done videos on my channel. Uh, Amy, if you hadn't seen them, you know, go look. Uh, I actually brought Rob Renfro in one time, and we talked about getting women into the trades. I think it's a great opportunity. Uh, I know several plumbers in Dallas and the Dallas area or several women that are plumbers. And, and guys, look, look at some of the top women plumbers in, in Texas. You know, Lisa Hill is the executive director of the Texas State Board. She's a plumber. Uh, Diane Villarreal uh, used to be the chief plumbing inspector in the city of Dallas. Uh, Mary Conger, a uh, daggum engineer. I mean, smart, smart lady, master plumber, and teaches plumbing. She knows what she's doing. There are um, Debbie Vukovic, the training coordinator for Local 100 for the plumbers. Uh, Guys, some of the some of the smartest plumbers I know are female plumbers. So 
I love it when people say, oh, a girl can't do that. It's like, dude, you better back up. That chick's going to grab a pie wrench. Uh, I love that. Yeah. And, and, and Mike, that's it. Your GI Bill, uh, when you turn out, and, and if you go to the union, I know the union's set up where, where they help you out a lot with it. But the union's also got a deal. And I, I don't know if you're interested in being a welder, but they've got a, a program where they send – guys directly out of the military into a, a welding program, teach them to weld, and, man, they can get out making great money. Uh, man, if you want to be a plumber, uh, man, Dallas, Texas is great. I know a, a company that does residential service plumbing, and, man, they're looking for plumbers. So, anyway, uh, let me see. Is it worth paying Dunn and Brad State to get a credit profile. They keep calling. You know what? I've I've never filled out their thing. When I've worked with larger companies, they did because you needed the sick code or, or whatever it is. Uh, I've never done the Dunn and Brad Street thing. You know, if if that's what I need for my company to get credit, I'm probably not going to get it. Uh, I tell you what. I tell you what's been beneficial though. That there there are a lot of opportunities when you have your own company about people wanting to extend credit and and you know check into them, uh, and and then as for us giving credit, we've actually we, we use Wells Fargo, and it's great because helping the customer. Man, it, it's not everybody that can write a a, a twenty five hundred dollar check or uh, man, we're doing a sewer job right now. It's almost forty thousand dollars. Uh, if you told me I had to write a check for forty thousand dollars to get the plumbing at my house w- fixed, uh, I'd probably go run a porta Johnny and put it in the backyard and say, "Look, I don't need indoor plumbing. It's it's really highly overrated." Uh, you know, not true, but uh, being able to offer customers that financing, it, it really does. It helps. Uh, and Vlad, you're right. Uh, Amy's got a great idea. I, I think there should be more females getting into it. And I'm telling you, females feel they have to work harder, so they normally move beyond the hit, the men uh, so fast. Uh, is V Feliz uh, starting plumbing school in March up in Massachusetts? Any heads up? Yeah, tell me where you're starting school. I, and I'm curious because there's a lot of different opportunities out there. Are, are you actually going to a, a school? Uh a community college? Are you going through a training program through the union or non-union? What What are you doing? And man, I'm just curious because I like to see what all's out there. Cody, how many service techs do I have? Are my guys slow right now? Uh, a couple of weeks before Christmas is always slow in here in Ohio. You know what, Cody? It, man, it is really funny. It's normally slow here too, but we have had our butts handed to us. Uh, I have actually been out in the field all day running calls. Uh, I called Julie at three thirty when I was, and, and and it's you know I start I try to start my live here at four o'clock. Uh, I tried calling Julie at three thirty, or I called her at three thirty and said, "Hey, I'm on the way," and she said, "Look, Will's pacing. He's trying to get the new camera set up and everything." And, and man, I, I felt bad, but it's like I have been out running calls all day long. Uh, we have been slammed the past couple of weeks, which you know it's a good problem. And, and the neat thing is, almost every almost all my calls right now are coming to me through social media. Uh, I'm still getting my referrals through master networks and I love that. But most of the new customers coming in are, are leads through YouTube and LinkedIn. So man, the way we use social media is, is phenomenal. It works. Uh, so yeah, is tell me, tell me what kind of school you're doing up there. Uh, Guitar 1301, just applied for my lessons. Can't wait to start. Man, congrats. Uh, Commercial, fantastic. Luis Hernandez, your message got retracted. Uh, Tradeswomen are, for the most part, more more meticulous than the male. Man, isn't that true? And and, and I hate to say it, uh, because I've always been one of those males. I've always studied hard. I've always wanted to work harder. I've always wanted to be the best. You know, I feel sorry for women because they get put in a position where it's like they have to be the best to prove they're that good. And and I don't believe in that. Uh, Man, you're right, though. Women, they think about it more. I think they they do things better. They work harder. And and they are just constantly trying to improve. 
And and I think it's great because that's what I've always tried to do. So Jim Brandt, we're all looking for good plumbers to hire. You have trucks sitting empty. You know what? I, I do too. Uh, Lewis, local 78 plumbers union. Good to have you here. I appreciate that. Uh, Jim Brandt, Luis, autocorrect. Uh-oh, what happened? At least I don't know what got autocorrected. Uh, but, man, you know, here, and here's the deal. And, and I tell people all the time, and, and you know what's funny? is I saw, I saw something on Facebook the other day. And, 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 and let me talk about it because, you know, th this is some some union guy. And, and you know, man, I, I hate to throw rocks at him, but, you know, is a union guy talking trash about non-union plumbers. And you know what, man? I, I'll tell you what. When, when I got in the union, I, I worked circles around a lot of plumbers. But don't get me wrong, I met some good ones in there too. But I tell you what, just because you go through a training program doesn't make you a better plumber. It may make you more knowledgeable, but it does not necessarily mean that you're a better plumber. Uh, I've had apprentices that worked better than some plumbers I brought in. Now, Think about that. The apprentice in a short period of time learned enough to do the job better, but it's mainly because of their attitude, the fact that they want to work, they want to learn, they want to do things right. A plumber, and a, a lot of plumbers just come in, they just want a job and a paycheck. Uh, I, I had one leave recently, and, and that's all it was. He's like, well, I left for more money. Well, okay. Work hard here. You could have made more money. Uh it, it's it's just man it, it's crazy the way it is but you know guys here's go go back to Jim Rohn and and a lot of y'all have heard me talk about this you know you bring more value to the people you work for you'll make more money and, and that's the end of the that's it, it all ends right there uh, if you bring more value if you work your tail off and you do the right thing and, and when I say work your tail off I mean eight hours work for eight hours pay to me that's a fair trade. Uh, I've never been anybody that I wanted to work for, you know, four hours and get paid for eight. Uh, I'm just going to work half the time. I'm going to goof off half the time, but I still want you to pay me for all eight hours. Uh, I believe that if we do things right and we learn, we educate ourselves, we improve ourselves. If I bring more value to the company that I work for, I make more money. And, and guys, it's always been like that. Uh, I've never been one of these people other than my first few months in the union, maybe six months in the union, I've always made over scale. Uh, but it's because I've always worked harder, learned more, and tried to do more. So that part's always been a good thing for me. Uh, so when I see a, a union plumber on Facebook bashing a non-union plumber or, or plumbers, saying, look, are y'all even plumbers? Does your license even count? You know what? <laughs> Just because you're in the union don't mean you're a great plumber. I promise. Uh, so guitar 1301, I guess you saw that. Man, I love that commercial. That is hilarious. Uh, let me see. Trying to get down here. Mike, haven't looked into welding. Uh, but into plumbing so I could work on my house in case it needs it, work at some point in time. And Mike, here, here's the thing, and, and here's a great thing, and it's, I'm glad you put it that way. Uh, here's what I like about plumbing is if you ever want to open your own company, being a plumber gives you a great opportunity. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. I don't think you're going to open up a, a $400 million commercial plumbing company next month, but at least with a plumbing license, the right plumbing license, you have the opportunity to go out, open your own company like I did. And, and, and I mean, it's, it's the easiest way to put it. Get out, do it like I did. You open your own company. You you you, you start with a truck or a van. You, you buy your tools. You buy your materials. You stock it. You fill it as you go. You advertise as you can. You network. You get out and meet people. You learn how to do social media. You learn how to do websites. There's a lot of things to learn. But you can do it. Uh, you can do it. Uh, I actually started doing a lot of that before I left my other company. So, you know.
getting things in place. I had my business name registered. I had my domain registered. Had a lot of things done because I knew that I wanted to do it. So when I walked out, it was easy to walk out. I already knew what I wanted to do. And man, just luckily for me, it it happened and happened well. Uh, Jim Brandt, I know Robert's female plumber. Yep, he's he's got. I know he's got one over there. And get more. He's like, look, I, I he sees right. Uh, served with her dad in the the Navy. My dad was in the Navy. Thank you, sir. Uh, she's a heck of a technician and sells like a madman. You know, and it's funny, and I, I like the way you put that too, Jim. People say, look, I, I don't want to be, uh, I, I want to be a plumber. I don't want to be a salesman. Guys, we're all salesmen. Uh, if, if, if I go out to a job and find a toilet that's not running or not working and, and say it's running or say it's not flushing, whatever the problem is, I like to give them options. And when I give them options, it, it's either, look, we can fix this. Uh, this is a cheap fix. This is the expensive fix. Uh, or we can replace this. That This is a low, medium, high. Uh, w whatever the cases may be. But we got to sell those options. We've got to let them know why each one of them is good or bad. And, guys, it, it, it's crazy because it's not being a salesman. It's giving people options. And... If you believe one option is better than the other and you you convey that information, that's not selling. It's not pushing. It, it's saying, look, and the way I do it, I'll, I'll give them a list of options. And I'll say, hey, you know what? If you were my mom or my sister, here's what I would tell you to do. And here's why. And, and because then I'm, I'm giving them my professional advice. And, and guys, look, it, it, it's, it's worth something. My professional advice I've got 40 years experience. So when I say, hey, this is probably what I would do and I mean it, man, that that's valuable because I ask the right questions. How long are you going to be here? How long have you had a problem with this? Or, or, or are, you, are you wanting to remodel your bathroom? Are you wanting to do this? Are you wanting to do this? And I ask all the questions where when I give somebody advice, it, it's the right advice. And, and I do. I want to help them. And, and man, just help, help make their lives better. And I do that by giving them options. Uh, you know, Paul, I do not like the Better Business Bureau. Uh, Townsend Moore, last week you said you guys in a Big D could make $100 an hour in a few years. Uh, I think it's definitely possible, especially if you get your master's and get your own truck. And, and Townsend, I, I wasn't even talking about it that way. I truthfully think that with the shortage in the trades that we've got right now, I truthfully think that plumbers are going to be, and it may not be a hundred, but it's going to be daggum close. Plumbers in, in the next five to 10 years, I think will be making a hundred dollars an hour on their check. And, and, and I think I said 10 years, you may have said five. Okay. No, I said 10. Yeah. Got readers. Got to love it. Uh, in a few years, I, I think I said about 10 years, maybe five. I don't remember, but I'm telling you what, there's not many people getting into the trades. The ones of us that are in it or are getting into it and the ones of us that do it right, we bust our butt. We do things right. We want to give the customer the very best every time we walk in. Man, it's huge and it works. And I'm just telling you, people in the trades in the next five to 10 years are going to be making really, really good money because there's not many more people getting into it. And I think that's the truth. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Paul Peck had a guy give me an ultimatum on a pretty big raise, or he had another job to go to. I said no, and he quit. Then he went and signed up for unemployment and collected it for two years. Wow. Uh, Paul, I, I luckily for me, not, knock on wood, I have not lost a dispute. Uh, I document everything very, very well. Uh, and man, I, I let people know when people leave why they left or why they were asked to leave or whatever the deal is, but man, I've never had one quit and then come back in and, and file a dispute. I tell him, Hey, he had a job when he left. So mm, I'd have thought about shutting down, uh, guitar 1301 worked for 20 years in the private industry, recently joined the union. What a big difference. Always try to do the best work possible. Uh, 
They are telling me I work too hard. Uh, you know, man, you know what? They, they used to tell me that too, but I, I didn't let it bother me. I, I've got one way I work and, and I give my very best. And my thought on that is if we don't work as hard as we possibly can for the contractors we work for, they're not going to be around. Uh, I agree that they're, they're looking at it and saying, you know, look, you're working too hard, man. If I'm making you look bad, I'm sorry. Uh, I suggest you pick it up and I, I don't know what else to tell you. I understand what it takes to do the job right. And I always want to do the job right. But I also know, man, I, I, w I want to do it the way I want to do it. And I'm not lazy. I'm not slow. I believe in doing things right. But I'm going to keep doing it my way. You keep doing it your way. And at the end of the job, when the superintendent wants to keep somebody around, let's see which one he keeps. Uh, Elevated one. I, and, uh, you know, guys, and look, here, here's the deal. And, and here's why I'm a great person to talk to about plumbing. Uh, you know, I talk about residential. I talk about commercial. I talk about new construction. I talk about service. I talk about union. I talk about non-union. Guys, I've done every bit of it. I've been industrial. Uh, I've been, I've, God, I've done utilities. Uh, I've done medical. I've built hospitals. Uh, I've had every license and endorsement in Texas. Uh, still got them. So I understand what it is you're talking about, about all of it. And, and that's why I tell people, you know, I put together that mini course. I don't know if y'all have seen it. Some of you have, some of you hadn't, uh, it's really easy. It's just, it's something for people wanting to get into the plumbing. And I say into the plumbing, it's easy for people wanting to get into plumbing or really any trades, because all I'm trying to do is help people figure out, do you want to be residential or commercial? Do you want to be union or non-union? Do you want to do uh, new construction or service? And I've got questions that I ask to help them figure that out. When I got into plumbing, I just knew I was going to be a plumber. I, I had no idea there was a difference. There was anything good, bad, or ugly one way or the other. And there's a lot of things that I wish I would have known, but I didn't. Nobody was talking about it. Nobody was teaching it. We didn't have... You know, I've heard this thing called the internet might stick around. So I thought I might try it a little bit. Thank you, Al Gore. I appreciate it. Uh, man, I just, I, I love what I do. And I love being able to share that with other people and help them. And I really think getting into the trades helps a lot of people. Uh, believe it or not, I think it helps everybody. So, okay. So my feed is lagging. Uh, man, we're, we're hooked up on the, is anybody else seeing that? Uh, we're hooked up through the Ethernet, and if, if it's lagging, I'm, I'm going to shut it down and get out of here because I know I hate that. Uh, so I'll get through these real quick. Anybody else let me know if, if we're lagging, if it's dragging or doing anything like that. But make sure before you get out of here, you give me a thumbs up just because, man, I've worked hard for it. I'm joking. Uh, so, yeah, if I'm lagging, please please let me know. Uh, man, we're not, there we go. <clears throat> Okay. Thank you, Will. Uh, guitar 1301, worked for 20 years. Okay, good. Uh, right back here. Can't wait to start my business. You know what? Here's the deal. And I was always a hard worker, and a, and a real good friend of mine started his own company about 25, 26 years ago. And, and I tell you what, he has done phenomenal. He's done great. He's a good guy. He does the right thing. And he's got good people working for him. And, man, his people want to work for him. He does things wonderful. And, and y'all, I am always looking at, you know, is there anybody out there that I can learn from? And y'all know I've joined SGI, and SGI has taught me a lot about things to do in the back of the house. They've got a lot of training for the front of the house, so, so that's great. Here lately, I, I've been looking at other people across the United States that are doing certain things. Uh, some of them, Luis, are, are out in uh, L.A., uh, so I actually, that's part of what I'm going to California for, uh, wanting to visit and, and see what all's going on out there. And, you know, is it something I want to get involved in? And I'm always looking at how can I better, not just myself, but my employees and how can I 
bring something better to the people that watch me on YouTube. And that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, cool. So apparently our, our Wi-Fi slowed down and then picked up. And I say Wi-Fi. I'm actually not on Wi-Fi. I'm plugged into the Ethernet. So I'm plugged into the real cable. Thank you, Al Gore. Uh, the real Internet. So thank you. Uh, Smooth YT, you want to become an apprentice, call a company, and what should I say? You know, man, I've made a ton of videos. Uh, first of all, go take my mini course and figure out what kind of plumber do you want to be. And, and I say that because, you know, you, if you like building things, you probably want new construction. If you like fixing things, you probably want service. And then I ask questions to figure out if you want to be residential or commercial. There's a lot of things that, that I ask, but it's to help you figure out what kind of plumber you really want to be. And I really wish somebody would ask me a lot of those things in the beginning because I think it would have helped me a lot. Uh, watch that. And then I've got a ton of videos teaching basically all that information. Uh, Chinko Mesa, uh, going back into plumbing, if tested HVAC, like plumbing better. Not looking forward to the snake lines. You know what, man? Sewer machines, sewer machines and cameras, uh, man, are a ton of fun. If you use them right, if you don't, they will wear you out. Uh, cameras, not so bad. Cameras just, man, some of them things can smell funky. Uh, but I, I love the cameras that I've got and, and the things that I can do with them. It's neat being able to show a customer where their problem really is. And look, I can prove it. See this, you can see this right here and you turn on a locator and boom, it's right here. So man, there's a lot of neat things about it. I love it. Uh, and man, when you get good at running something and, and when I mean good, I mean, you've done it many, many times when, when you put that locator on it and you're like, boom, there it is. And there's no doubt in your mind, greatest feeling in the world. And, and it, it's, I, I do, I think it's great. Uh, you know, getting into plumbing it, and, and it's not for everybody. Uh, everybody is not going to be a plumber when they grow up, but I'll tell you what, it, it's a great opportunity. And the, the fact that, man, we can have an amazing life and not have to go to college. And, and when I say work hard, I don't mean get out there and break your back. I don't mean get out there and kill yourself, but man, to get out there and do a job that you're paid to do, do it every day and, and, and be good at it. It is huge. We have miss Juliet Miranda in the house guys, man, you want to talk about somebody else you need to subscribe to. Uh, you know, I talk about Paul Peck. Paul's amazing. Teaches you sheetrock. Uh, you know, and Juliet, just so you know, if you hadn't been here long, we, we were talking about getting women into plumbing. Uh, and she is doing a Merry Christmas Eve Eve podcast tonight. Uh, Miranda talks about, or, or Juliet Miranda talks about drinking bourbon. And, oh my God, I, I, I love Jack. I love Pappy Van Winkle. Uh, Juliet, I've got a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle 20 that I babysit. Uh, it is for very special occasions. Uh, but guys, she will go live here in about two hours. And I'm telling you what, it's wonderful to listen to, great to watch, and it's, it's a lot of fun. And, and I thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, me and Julie both listen to Juliet and, and her man. Uh, David, the producer, and man, great things going on uh, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on the podcast. Uh, man, it's it's fantastic. Juliet, cheers to you. Uh, tonight or right now, I'm drinking iced tea and water, uh, not mixed. Uh, you know, I'm drinking the tea and chasing it with water if I need to, but it, it's fantastic. So, Guys, make sure if y'all have not subscribed to Juliet Miranda, go over there and do it. You, you'll get a kick out of it. It's good. And, and she helps the trades people. She's actually got a podcast where she interviewed Mike Rowe. And Mike Rowe is, is great. He's doing good things. Uh, man, unspeakable things. So, or the, the unwritable, I believe is what it is. But I'm telling you, watch her podcast. It's just so fun to watch. So thank you. Uh, 
Julie Wakefield on point on the car, in the car. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, great place to listen to podcasts. Uh, you know, I, I do that in the mornings and, and, and guys, when, when I talk about improving your lives, bringing more value to your company, here, here's the things that I started doing that, that really helped me out. And, and what I did is I was listening to Jim Rohn one day and he talks about used to get up in the morning, watch the news, get nothing but bad stuff. You know, people are talking about robbery and murder and rape and prison and, you know, the economy and, and there's nothing good. He said, I would put all this bad stuff into my head and then try to go to work and get good stuff out of it. And he compared it to baking a cake with concrete mix. And I got to tell you that that kind of stuck with me. I'm like, okay, I don't care what kind of cake you're trying to make. It doesn't work. If you put something bad into it, you're never going to get anything good out of it. So my thing was, wow. And I started thinking about what I was doing and I used to get up and watch the news. I used to listen to the news on the way in. I used to, and I still do listen to country music a lot. Uh, but I used to listen to it every morning on the way to work or talk radio. And, and I mean, don't get me wrong. And I love country music, but there was nothing great there. So what I've started doing is I actually started listening to YouTube on the way to work and listening to Gary V and John Maxwell and Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, Chaz Wilson, so many different good people that, that really were helping me put good things in my head. And, and it made me realize, look, man, I can do better things. And, and, you know, Gary V and, and it's funny because, you know, I heard Gary V I, was, I used to get up every morning, work out, get on the treadmill for, I started to say four hours, uh, for four miles, uh, actually four and a quarter miles. Cause, cause I do four miles at, at four miles an hour. So in an hour I'd walk my mile or walk my four miles. And then after that, what I would do is do the quarter mile cool down at three miles an hour. So, and it was great. Loved it. Good workout. Felt good. And I was watching Gary V one morning and he, he literally said, he said, I don't care if you're 20, if you're 50 or if you're 70, you can do this. And he was talking about social media and I thought, wow, you know, he's talking to me. I'm almost 20. Uh, so I, I decided, look, I, I know, don't let the mustache fool you. I started getting gray hair when I was 15. That was five years ago. Uh, I'm almost 20. So, you know, I decided, look, I, I can do this. And I started studying social media. Who do I want to learn from? What do I want to do? And I went to social media marketing world and, and it's a, it's a great story. And, you know, one day I'll, I'll tell everybody about it, but I literally, I, I walked in and I realized there was nobody there like me. And I started learning social media and it helped me so much. And man, I, I've, I've just become a sponge because I want to help people. And I see this as being a great way to help people. Uh, oh, Juliet, that is a very nice bottle. Yes, it is. Thank you so much. Uh, let me see. Big Daddy Linux, how are you? Good to have you here. Merry Christmas to you too, sir. Uh, hey, Kim. My boss wants me to overcharge customers despite the service was a very simple job. I'm having a hard time to do that out of my conscience. What should I do? You know, and man, that's a, that's a great way to look at it is – you know, we've, we've got to be comfortable charging what we charge. And guys, look, I, I've got videos out there. I tell people, look, I'm not the cheapest plumber in town. Uh, matter of fact, I'm probably closer to the more expensive. And sorry, I was trying to see if my hands were blurry or not. Uh, anyway, I'm playing with my camera without y'all even knowing it. See, if I wouldn't have told you. Uh, my thing is, we've got to charge what we've got to charge. And you get some plumbers that just, they want to, they want to hurt people. They want to charge a ton of money. Uh, there are plumbers that will actually lie to people and, and, and jack them over. And I hate that. Uh, my thing is, I've told y'all I'm part of SGI. Uh, they have a straightforward pricing guide. And, and 
that guide helps me put my pricing together. And what I do with that is I know what it costs me for an hour for an employee. And, and it's different for everybody. So I can't tell you your number. And people say that all the time. Well, well I, I want a copy of your pricing book. Well, number one, no. Uh, I've paid a lot of money for it. And I update it and I study it and I change it and I modify it. And man, I, I do it often. Uh, and, and really, when I say I do it often, I study it often. We just changed our prices and I hadn't done that in two years. And and no, I, I did not lower it. Uh, that just popped up. Uh, I, I've got right now, there, there's two plumbers, two apprentices. Uh, smooth YT. There you go. Uh, sorry, squirrel. Uh, so anyway, you know, my, my, my thing is, I know what it costs me for an hour. Meaning, I know what it costs me for the journeyman. I know what it costs me for the apprentice. I know what it costs me for overhead. Uh, I know what it costs me for the vehicles, for the insurance, for for everything involved. And you know, the, there there's there's lots of good things out there. PHCC has a great Excel sheet uh, that you know I saw through an old mentor of mine, Robert Melko, and. There's a lot of different price books out there that people will sell you. There's a lot of different systems that people will sell you. Uh, the thing that I'll tell you is, look, I know, and, and, and I know for a fact that the SGI system works. I know that the PHCC system works. I, I, I've talked to Melco about it. And, you know, my thing at the end of the day is, look, you've got to find out, you've got to be comfortable charging what you charge. And the way that I do that it is I literally break it down and show my guys. And when I say I'm not the cheapest plumber in town, I mean that. Uh, I'm actually closer to the more expensive. But I'm not the most expensive. I know who they are. I know how they get their pricing. Uh, I know I, I know what pricing they're charging. So I, I'm very familiar and comfortable and good where I'm at. Now, sometimes my guys aren't. Sometimes my guys are like, oh, my God, this is a lot of money. But Whenever I sat down and explained to them, hey, do you realize how long it takes us to do this? How long it takes us to do this? And, you know, hey, Kim, here's the thing is, you may have got that one done quick. Maybe you're a really good plumber, but maybe the other five plumbers in the shop are slow and it takes them twice as long. And, and you've got to take all that into the factory. And and when I say that, the, the hours as to how long it takes to do something are really what's factored in. Me, I'm pretty good. I can normally get things done faster than it should take. But I also got to understand I've got tradesmen and I've got plumbers and even apprentices doing certain things that it may take them longer. And it all comes out in the wash. But, you know, the, the way that the way you're supposed to figure it is, man, figure out what it's going to cost you for that hour of labor. And that's what different companies do that have systems and processes in order to do that. And if you're just trying to guess at pricing, you, you're, you're going to lose. And I remember, I remember reading a deal one time, uh, the guy had sent me a, an email, I guess is what it was. And he says, look, I am literally trying to beat everybody else's pricing because I'm going to get more work. And I said, so how are you doing that? And he says, well, well I call them and I, you know, I pretend to be somebody else. You know, we've never done that. Uh, I call them and pretend to be somebody else and find out what they charge an hour. And then I lower my price. And guys, here's one thing that I learned from SGI is, look, most companies out there are losing money. And, you know, think about it. Why do most companies go out of business in the first five years? It's not because they're getting rich and they just wanted to walk away with all the profits. That they're losing money. And, and that's why, look, I, I, I love what SGI does. I love what PHCC does. There's a lot of different organizations. Those two I'm very familiar with, and, and I think they're doing good things. But, you know, if I explain to my guys the cost of what it takes to do business and make them understand it, and remember, my guys are union, that they make good money. There's benefits that most other plumbing companies don't have. I mean, my guys, I pay for their insurance, not just them, them and their families. 
They've also got a pension that I pay for. They've also got a 401k that I pay for. So it's a great package. But my guys have to understand that because they have to understand that whenever they go out to a job and they may charge more than other plumbing companies, they need to be able to, to say, hey, look, I'm a better plumber. I'm worth more money. I'm going to do the job right. And that's why. And you may not always tell it to the customer that way, but man, take pride in your work. Be good at what you're good at. And, and let's find a way to make all that happen. Because if, if you as the plumber make money and the customer saves money and the supply house gets paid and the union gets their money and I don't, it ain't going to work because I'm going out of business. It's got to be a win-win situation for the employee, the company owner, and the customer. And when a union or non-union company, anyone can make those things happen, then it's a big deal because then it works for everybody. So let me see here. Juliet, hello to Julie. Big Daddy, hi Paul. How many employees do you have? Smooth YT, I got that. Wait, you run a company with two plumbers and two apprentices. Uh, man, let me tell you what. Number one, I need plumbers. Uh, Y'all have heard me say that. I think I say that multiple times every week. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm running a company with two plumbers and two apprentices. Uh, I've got two social media people. I've got a CCR at the front desk, and my wife runs the back office. So that tells you there I'm not making a lot of profit. But the good thing is we're doing things right. And with me being involved in the field, we get to do that every day. We turn down calls every day because our phones are blowing up. And I just got to tell people, look, I don't have enough plumbers. Uh, any of y'all know plumbers in the area that want to go to work for a residential service company? I'm looking. Uh, Mike, good night, brother. Uh, man, great having you here. Thank you so much. If I can help you find a plumbing job over here when you're ready, plumbing, welding, it doesn't matter to me what you want to do. I'll be happy to help you. So thank you. And again, thank you for your service. Uh, you know, hey, Cam, here's what I would do. A ask him to break it down. So, say, look, I, I just, I have a hard time with this pricing, but I understand, you know, it's, you know, here, here's the funny thing. Uh, we're, we're doing a big job. I, I talked about it earlier. It's, it's a sewer repair. It's almost $40,000. And actually, it's probably going to go over that. My thought is, when I was a plumber, I just said, wow, you know, I'm doing all this work and he's making 40 grand. And I'd even go back and look at it and say, okay, look, I, if, if I made $1,000 this week and he made 40, that means he made $39,000. Now, here's the problem. Uh, I'm not thinking of the, you know, what, $24,000 I've got to pay the dig crew. Uh, I'm not thinking of the profit, the overhead, or, or let's take out profit because apparently that's what I was thinking about. The the cost of doing business, the phones, the insurance, the advertising, the 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 marketing guys, the the two videographers, the CCR at the front desk, Julie running the back office, uh, the insurance that the guys get, the holidays they get paid for, the pension plan they have, the four hundred one k plan they have. They don't think about all that. They think, hey, I made a thousand bucks this week and he made 39. And it's not that way. So, hey, Kim, what I would tell you to do is, is go in and say, look, now some of these prices are just, it's really hard for me to see. And, and see, I try to be really transparent with my guys and say, hey, look, here, here's what it cost us. And, you know, we want to be the best plumbing company. So I want the best plumbers, I want the best apprentices. So I have no problem being open and honest with them and telling them, you know, hey, here's what we're doing. Here's how we're doing it. Here's what we're trying to do. I was looking for my chapstick. Uh, here's what we're trying to do. Uh, man, we want to be the best. And the only way you're going to be the best is, is to try and, and, and try and hire the best and try and train the best. But if you're going to do all that, you're, you're going to charge more for it. It goes back to what I told you all about Jim Rohn a while ago. If we bring more value, aren't we worth it? And at the end of the day, my answer is yes. So, hey, Cam, I, I hope that you get to talk to your boss and hope he explains all of it and makes it make sense. And, and hopefully you're on the same page. 
Uh, but I'll tell you what, there, there's a lot of people that have come to work for me and I said, oh my God, these prices, I, I just can't do it. But they were working with the, the wrong company or the wrong people. And man, it, it was just kind of tough on them. Uh, you've got to get that mindset to where you believe what you're charging and you understand the value in it. So uh, that's a great question. So I really do appreciate you asking that. Uh, what I would say is, you know, talk to him and just say, hey, look, I want to understand why we charge what we charge. And, and me, I'll sit down and break it down for my guys. I have no problem with it. I want them to understand the value and it helps make them better at their job because now they understand why we charge what we charge. And, and it is, it's, it's very beneficial and it, it's a big deal. Uh, hey, Will, did you leave? I don't know if Will left yet or not. I know he's trying to get out. It's 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 Christmas Eve Eve. Uh, thank you, Juliet Miranda. Uh, it is. And I want to make sure that everybody gets out of here. Uh, but I've also got to figure out how to shut all, down all this new equipment. So, Will, if you're still here, let me know. Uh, if not, I'm sure I will figure it out. But I want to get through these questions. We are going to get out of here at 530 today. I know I was a little late coming in. So I'm going to leave early to make up for coming in late. It's the way it works sometimes. Uh, so, yes, two plumbers, two apprentices. Uh, maybe you should just trust him. There you go. Chinko Mesa, the company used to work for, charged 450 for replacing the toilet flush valve uh it didn't feel right and yeah you know, I, I gotta tell you on the flush valve man we're our price probably isn't far off that but if you look at the flush valve i think it tells you and, and you know you got to figure too i and I, i'm not sure where you're at but i'm in dallas so basically a service plumbing service plumber here in dallas is about four hours production time about four hours drive time. So you've got to figure, and, and, and man, when you learn how to do pricing and set it up, it's all set up where you learn how to figure your numbers. But if you think that you're just getting paid for the time you're on the job and you say, wait, I was here, say an hour, say it took you a whole hour. If you say, man, for a whole hour, I charged $450. Uh, you got to figure your boss had to pay you to get there. He had to pay you to leave. He might've had to pay you to go pick up that part. Uh, or he had to pay you to stock the van to put the part in it. Uh, there's a lot of things that have to go into that. So it's not just the time you're on the job. And, and if you think it is, and if that's all you're ever charging for, man, y'all are, you're going to go broke. Uh, so, so, you know, please listen to me here. There are companies that have systems that, that help you and teach you. And my business did not start doing well <laughs> until. I started coaching with Michael Gerber when he coached me. Uh, after that, I got involved with SGI and learned that. Uh, I started talking to Chaz Wilson, Master Networks, and started learning that. And Michael Stelsner and Social Media Marketing World, there's so many different people that I've learned from, but also the books, the knowledge. Uh, Jeremy Vest to help me with YouTube, Daryl Eves to help me with YouTube, Sean Cannell to help me with YouTube, uh, Owen Video to help me with YouTube, uh, Judy Fox to help me with LinkedIn, uh, Lila Smith to help me with LinkedIn. There's so many people that have helped along the way. And then you start watching and consulting with other people, you know, Nick and Dean Nemen. And, and the things that you learn from watching the different things, Paul Peck, watching what he does. And there's so many people that, that we learn from. And, you know, your mentor does not have to be somebody you can see, touch, and talk to every day. Sometimes a mentor is somebody you watch and learn from without ever even talking to them. And there's a lot of people on social media that I've watched from a distance and learned a lot of good things from. And, man, I love it. I get really excited about it. Uh, so, anyway, let's get back in here. So Jack Desmaris, Jack Desmaris, Desmaris. Hey, 16 years old, go to vocational high school. So T vocational high school, technical vocational high school. 
I am the best in my plumbing shop, yet I'm still having trouble finding a good job. Do you have any advice? Uh, man, wh where do you go to school at? Uh, at. Oh, Chinko Mesa was in Hawaii. Okay. And see, I don't know what they charge over there, brother. Uh, I don't know what standard for over there. Uh, it, it's just, man, I would think cost of living over there isn't very cheap either. So I, I'd be happy they were charging that much. Uh, so, so Jack, uh, my question to you is, is, you know, what kind of plumbing job are you trying to get? Uh, is it residential, commercial? Is it service? Is it new construction, union or non-union? Where are you located? Uh, that there, there's, say me and these daggum readers, Neshoba Valley Tech. Uh, so ma'am, you know, Here's the deal, guys. And, and, and I've got videos teaching people how to get jobs. Uh, guys, if y'all hadn't done it yet, please subscribe to the channel, first of all. Uh, ring the bell if you want to get notified when we're coming out. But my thing is, look, subscribe and share. Uh, subscribe to the channel and share it with other people and tell them about it. That That's what's helping us get the information out there to help get, you know, 16-year-olds in here saying, look, I, I want to learn. And, and, and Jack, brother, I think that is fantastic. Uh, that's about the age. That's about the age when I started getting into plumbing. Uh, man, here, here, here's the thing is Jack, find the top plumbing that you want to do and then start looking at those companies and then start communicating with them, start following them, start looking at what they do, how they do it, why do they do it and learn about them. And then when you go and apply, you can actually talk to them about what they do, how they do it and why they do it. And they're going to understand you, you've you've been studying that you know their mission statement or their values. You know what's important to them. Uh, you know, I, I told some of y'all earlier. I'm headed to LA next week, and and it's to talk to to somebody uh, about plumbing, uh, uh, about uh, possibly doing things different here in Texas, but also about what can we do to make the world better. And and if you don't think as a plumber we can make the world better. Uh, yeah, guys, we can. Uh, I just, man, I, I looked at my hat, and I, I want to remind all y'all uh, about Logotology here in Richardson, Texas. That's who did that. That's who does uh, all my shirts and stuff like that for me. Uh, I guess y'all can see that pretty good. Uh, man, Logotology here in Richardson, Sex Richardson Texas. Uh, they do my embroidery work. Uh, I've got a tailor that I go to that have my, my collars cut off and they actually do a fantastic job. And thanks to Wrangler, uh, man, I gotta tell you, I, I've worn Wrangler jeans and, and I never got to that last week. So guys, I'm really sorry. Uh, you know, last week's show was Wrangler or Levi's. And if y'all were there, do me a favor, leave a comment. Do you wear Wranglers or do you wear Levi's? Uh, just drop it down there in the chat. Tell me which one you wear. Uh, because we, we had a really good show last week and, and we talked about Wranglers and Levi's and this and that. And then right after I got off, I thought, oh my God, I, I never told them what I wear. Uh, I've worn Wranglers since I was a kid. Uh, I, I loved it going to school. And I remember dating a girl in high school that her mom actually ironed her jeans, starched them, where she had a crease down the front. And I thought that was so cool. And, you know, I, I know y'all think I'm a redneck and, and you might be partially close. Uh, but my thing is, and I've just, I've always worn Wranglers. I, I, I love them and that they're, they're great stuff. And I'm going to have to look at that in a minute when I get my glasses on. Anyway, I, I love the way they feel. I love the way they fit. I love the way they last. Uh, and I, I had been buying a, a different brand shirt and I was carrying it down. I had to have them tailored and fit and things like that. And I ordered these, these George Strait Wrangler shirts. And, and I mean, man, I've got a ton of them over here now uh, because I think they're great. So what I did is, is man, I, I've switched over. Uh, my shirts are now Wrangler. My, my jeans always have been. I'll tell you what I have started doing. I've started wearing the 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 Wrangler, the rugged wear. And I've actually, I wore some the other day, the, the fire retardant. And 
I tell you what, and they work. The, the, not the fire retardant, but but the the rugged wear. The the only two things I ever blow out jeans and, and guys. When I say I mean heavy starch, I mean my my jeans feel like stainless steel. Uh, and if Julie's in here, she's laughing right now because she knows I'm 100 percent right. Uh, but my thing is the the only place I ever have a problem is that the top where the rivets are on the on the the pocket and in the crotch because. They get starched so hard that, that when I step up, but I'm telling you what, the, the rugged wear Wrangler jeans are phenomenal. Uh, they, they've, they've got supports at the pocket. They've, they've got the crotch beefed up. And I'm telling you, guys, number one, I love Wrangler. I always have. Uh, it's, it's a big deal. Uh, you know, it, it's a big deal, and you got to be comfortable in what you wear at work. And to me, that that works. I love it. So let me go through here real quick. Uh, so Jack's at Neshoba Valley Tech. Townsend sewer jobs are fun, especially if there are a few angles. Uh, Townsend, I, I'm tunneling under a, a condo up in a, our townhouse up in Rockwall. Actually, I've got like three different sewer jobs going on right now. We are slammed. You know, somebody asked earlier, has it slowed down right here before Christmas? Oh, heck no. It has been crazy. Uh, Townsend Moore, do you go to Minsky's off West Shore? I'm assuming you are talking to someone else. James Cunningham is in the house. Uh, good evening, Mr. Wakefield. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, sir. Glad to have you here. Uh, Jack, looking for any type of plumbing jobs in Massachusetts? Now I know where we're going to the West Shore. Uh, you know what? And, and Jack, let me ask you this. Hey, have you, have you contacted local 12, uh, just to see, uh, I don't know if they're hiring. I don't know if you're of age, if they can hire you yet, but man, I'm, you know what, what part of Massachusetts are you in? Cause I know people in Boston, brother, I can hook you up. Hey, Kim Levi's come on. Really? Man. And see, I, th I thought me and you were connected. I thought, look, this is this hey Kim, it's, it's going to be good. And I'm joking. Uh, man, it's the way it fits. Uh, and, and, and I see James Cunningham, uh, the right size. I get it. Uh, man, they got to fit me right. So <laughs> Roger approved jeans. Hey, Kim, absolutely. Uh, the Wrangler is the Roger approved jeans and the Roger approved shirts. So... I'm loving it. Uh, but I'll tell you what, man, the, these shirts, and even when I carried them to over to have my embroidery work done, uh, the, the people that do my embroidery work literally sent me a message. It is Jamie. I don't know if I called over there one day or if she sent me a message or called me. But she's like, hey, these shirts are nice. It's like, oh, no, those shirts are very nice. Uh, and the cool thing is the Wrangler George Strait shirts are cut so well, I didn't even have to have them tailored. Uh, the sleeves are great. The shirts are great. The collars, I still have my banded collar. So y'all can see that. I like it. Uh, and guys, I've, I've gone three minutes over than what I was going to. What I'm asking you guys, look, if you like what we're doing, please go down the bottom, give us a thumbs up. The things I ask are, look, subscribe and share. Tell other people about us. Uh, I am really trying to recruit people into the trades. Uh, not just plumbing. It's just plumbing is what I'm passionate about, but plumbing, electrical, HVAC, roofing, sheetrock, painting, windows, man, it doesn't matter. There are 5.2 million unfulfilled jobs and we need people in the trades. And I think it's great. So I'm going to read through these real quick because I see a hundred questions just came in. Uh, so Jack, live in Pepperell, which is North Central. So also came, also 12 came to my school. They hired 18. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, Jack, I might have to set something up where I can have y'all message me. You can go to Twitter and send me a message, underscore Roger Wakefield, uh, DM me or something like that. Send me a message. Uh, or I'll tell you what, Jack, you can also go into my mini course. It's free. Uh, subscribe, look at the videos, find the one where I talk about uh, school is open. Uh, I teach 
people to learn things about plumbing. Uh, my free mini course, it, it's just going to ask you, do you want residential, commercial, new construction service, union or non-union? But I know companies that I can help hook you up with. So please go to one or the other, send me a message, give me your email address. I will get in touch with you. Uh, Juan Escobedo, am I hiring licensed plumbers? Yes. Every week. Yes. Every week I come here, I say, man, look, I need more plumbers and I need them bad. So yes, we are. Do I allow my plumbers to do overtime? We try not to, but if we have to, yes. Or if a plumber says, hey, look, if any calls come in this Saturday, I, I'll, I'll run them. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we try to give the plumbers what they want. We try to help them out. See, you're, 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 ooh, dang, James, how tall are you? Hey, Kim, good night to you. Thank you so much. Uh, Isaiah, how's everyone doing? We're doing a sewer dig up in the rain. That does, does not sound like a lot of fun to me. Hope you got pumps with you. Uh, Wrangler, cowboy cut, regular fit, 3440. Wow. Wow. Long legs. Uh, I used to wear 36, 36. Uh, now I wear like 34, 34. Uh, it's not as much scrunch around my ankles. Uh, the 34 is fit a little better. Uh, actually, actually right now uh, I'm, I'm, it's the holiday season. Uh, I, I'm in my 35, 34s. Uh, so I'm working on it. Central Mesa, Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. Paul Peck, brother, all my tuber turds, my moderators, Paul, love you guys. Uh, I love doing this. I have fun doing it. Will, thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you for everything you've done, getting things ready. Uh, man, I just want to tell y'all, thank you so much and Merry Christmas. I really hope, and I hope the end of this year goes great. And I hope next year turns out to be amazing. James Cunningham, six foot six, man. I used to do security for the Mavericks. So you're not that tall to me. Uh, I've stood, I've stood next to Sean Bradley and Shaq. And, and people like that, I mean, you just look up and it's like, wow. No, six foot six is great, man. Uh, yeah. I hope you're tall and skinny. I have you crawling around under tunnel sewer repairs all the time. One, locating Grand Prairie, like to fill out an application with you. You got your journeyman license this year in March. One, I'll tell you, do, do you do residential service because man i am looking for residential service plumbers grand prairie is out of our service area so you'd have to drive here but man we can dag i'm sure talk about it uh isaiah 92 merry christmas everyone god bless what a great way to end it on guys merry christmas to y'all i hope you have a great merry christmas and a happy new year and it's going to be great merry christmas to you all and god bless you all I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed. Bam.